Simon Woodhouse is a chef with a dream. He's come to France in a leaking boat he bought for a pound and renovated himself. His mission is to travel through the canals, sampling the delights of regional French cooking and finally open his boat as a restaurant in Paris. This is the story of the floating kitchen. So far, Simon's journey through France in Water Lily has been anything but tranquil. Low water levels in the canals through which he hoped to make it to Paris have forced him back out to sea, and now he's trying another route inland via the Seine. And on top of this, he's got engine troubles. If I can't fix it, it's pretty much terminal, to be honest. Fed up with boat problems, Simon headed off to experience the call of the wild, hunting game in the Burgundy forests and he found time to cook for a French aristocratic family in a 13th century abbey, where it nearly all went very wrong. Just going to check if the ovens are working and if I've done the right things with the knobs. Simon's finally managed to get the engine going after days of fiddling and fine-tuning. They can now head out of the Seine and back into the peace and quiet of the French canals. With the boat safely moored up, Simon's arrived at the village of verdun sur le doux in Burgundy on the eve of Bastille Day celebrations. He's been invited to a mid-morning game of ball by the mayor and a few of his chums. Well, it always seems polite when you come to a town to meet the mayor. And maybe a bit more impolite to uh, interrupt this very precious game of ball. Bonjour. Bonjour, Simon. Bonjour, Simon. Bonjour, Simon. Tu vas bien? Monsieur le maire. Oui. <laughs> Bastille Day, when France became a republic and threw out the monarchy, is marked by a national holiday. Food and wine, of course, is at the heart of the celebrations. Qu'est-ce que tu penses de la la nouvelle recette maintenant en France? For me, yeah. for my, no, it's not good. traditional. Traditional, it's good. I'm learning that as well. <laughs> Verdun is proud of its traditions and has one of the oldest wood fire ovens in France. C'est Marguerite. 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 Simon. Bonjour. The mayor has suggested that Simon gets hands-on experience making traditional French bread. So this is my first lesson, an introduction into making bread in France. This is just the first step, just introducing the, the water to the flour, getting the, getting the process going, or just making the goo. The ingredients for making bread are fairly simple. It's a combination of white flour, salt, yeast and water. But the key to its success is in the preparation and the cooking. So this is the gluten and protein starting to develop and give us this stringy texture to the bread. And the longer you work it, the longer you beat it, prove it once, knock it back and do it again, really does give you this, this wonderful light, airy texture. Well, chefs know that and bakers know that and probably most of the Women's Institute know that, but um, it seems to be a skill that's getting forgotten with the rest of people. <laughs> but what makes this bread so different is the wood-fired oven. One thing I'll never be able to replicate is that. A wood-fired oven, and there's nothing to beat it. I'm sort of setting water lily alight. <laughs> there's not much I can do about that. Before they bake the bread, Simon's got a bit of time on his hands. So what better way to spend it than to discover another local culinary dish? <sighs> got a mission on. Yeast's got to rise for an hour. Got to do its stuff in there. I've got to be back or I'll get in trouble. Meanwhile, I've got to go and cook some fish. Mission on. In the centre of the village is the Hotel de Trois-Marie, where the local celebrity chef, Yves Laurent, is preparing for Bastille Day. Bonjour, bonjour. Oh, good morning. Eve, how are you? Eve, bonjour, Simon. Eve has been running this popular local restaurant virtually single handed for over 30 years. He's invited Simon to watch him cook one of Burgundy's oldest fish dishes called a pochus. So, this, is, this local dish is, uh, we're very far inland here in, uh, in Burgundy. And this is a, a local dish of river fish. This is eel. We've got trout. 
The other one was tench. I've never eaten tench before. It's um, always been regarded as a very slimy, muddy river fish, and pond fish even, stagnant water fish. I remember catching them as a kid, and they're so slimy, you'd, you'd never think to eat them. So I'm in for a penny, in for a pound, and, and see how this works. Eve's style of cooking is rural and rustic. The flavours are strong and perhaps, like many village chefs, a bit rough around the edges. Garlic. There's no messing about with the wine going in there, is there? Fantastic. A good cheap cooking wine. Bang it in. A good vin, are you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you see the ingredients, it is exactly what it says on the tin, straight on the heat, seven or eight minutes. Cook that out so the fish is cooked, then we separate the sauce with a little bit of flour and butter reduction. We get the finished product. OK, it doesn't look Michelin star award winning, but to make this dish more interesting to the palate, it needs to have a sauce. And there is a debatable method of how it should be done. This is making a basic fond of a basic stock. So that was fish bones from the, the prep room, straight in the pan. The liquor and some of the garlic, all the herbs. Quick add a minute stock. The flavour's cooked out of everything. Get rid of the messy bits. Turn that into a sauce. It's at this point that Eve shows his true colours. Je vais prendre ce qu'on appelle beurre manu. Beurre manu, oui, je sais. This is how we're going to do it. This I know, this is, this is classic. It's called beurre manu, butter of the hand. It's um, flour and butter brought together. You hold it a while so the glue develops, and then you can add it to a sauce. And as you whisk it, well, there you go. Straight in with the whisk. And the beating action coheres the sauce. This is really old school. I mean, it's, it's frowned upon almost in England these days. Everything's gone reduction, 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 but I kind of like this. The final result is a sauce that will make what could be regarded as a fairly plain fish dish into something more tasty. Mm, such a kick from that wine still, because there was so much of it. But the, uh, I think it needs this sort of acidity, because they are fairly simple tasting fish. And um, this is a good bit of flattery for the flavor. The finishing touch is to add chunky garlic croutons. Well, I've gone straight for the tench here because I've, this is what I've never tried, never tasted. It's fantastic. And after a quick tasting, Eve talks Simon into giving him a hand with tomorrow's Bastille Day celebration lunch. Eve, merci. C'est bien. Of course. Of course. <laughs> but for now, it's back to Simon's bread to prepare it before going in the oven. After the dough has been kneaded, it's doubled in size, and they have to work quickly shaping the bread to make sure it doesn't lose its volume before baking. It's all in the hands, and Simon seems to be getting the hang of it pretty quickly. Finally, the bread's ready to go in the oven. And the unique feature which makes a brick oven the unrivaled king among ovens is retained heat. This is what makes this bread so special. You can actually see the ones in the back now starting to come up a tree. The final result is a bread that's crispy on the outside and warm and moist on the inside. The perfect French loaf. Ah, see, it's the real thing. It's just spot on. And the best thing about this really is just the fact that we've made it. Back at the boat, Simon's recent food excursions have inspired him to push on with building his kitchen. When he arrives in Paris, he hopes to cook for 16 guests at a sitting. They'll be on top and he'll be down below. And at the moment, the work conditions are anything but trouble-free. I think the temperature's recording 34 degrees at the moment, and then we're in this wooden box, sun beating down upon us. The plan is to have a central service area with oven, refrigeration at the back, and hot and cold prep areas either side. Well, here it is, a floating kitchen at last. <laughs> it may not look like the most high-tech operation, but Simon is happy that the foundations for a good working galley have been put in place. 
The final test will be cooking for French clientele. Coming up, Simon gets a surprise when he returns to Eve's kitchen. And John Burton Race visits Waterlily for the first time. So this is it, is it? And he's not impressed. I really do think you need some sort of psychiatric help. 